RealAirCulture.com's coverage of the Southwest Ag Conference in Richtown, Ontario is brought to you by CNM Seeds, Pride Seeds, and High Stick NT. We're joining her now on RealAirCulture.com by Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technologies, uh, based in the U.S. Whereabouts are you based at? I'm based down in Kentucky, Sean. Perfect. Uh, okay, Phil, your expertise is uh, is wheat and the production of wheat and maximizing the health of wheat. Uh, what are, what are some of the things that you have found in your research and the, the work you've been doing to maximize the yield of wheat? Well, I spend a lot of time traveling in different countries around the world, and wherever you go, every specific region of the world has challenges. But you really start drilling down into the challenges, and no matter whether you're in Kentucky or in Ontario or, or Alberta, a lot of the principal challenges are very consistent, and those frequently include uh, seeding depth, you know, consistent seeding depth, that's important for yields. If you get wheat seeds excessively deep, they don't tiller as much. Uh, so that can have an impact on yield. Seeding rates are important for generating uh, maximum yields. Obviously, it's important to know the varieties, the characteristics of those varieties. It's obviously important to seed those in a timely window to achieve maximum yield. So I would say those are some of the core components required wherever you are to help achieve maximum yields within wherever that region may be. Where does uniformity fit into that? Uh... Uniformity is very important. I gave some examples during the, the, the Southwest Ag Conference yesterday and will continue to do again today. Uh, I've seen lots of examples where just simple head counts per square meter or head counts per meter of row reveal huge differences in head populations which translate into yield. When you look simply at the components of yield I mean, the components of yield are simply the number of heads per square meter or per square yard, depending on where you are, where you are. Uh, the number of grains per head, and then the density of the grain, the test weight, or the, or the specific weight, depending on where you are. So those are the those are the, the components of yield, and all of those come together to generate the yield. So having a uniform field with those components of yield, that's where yields are. So it's all about doing the best job possible, seeding the crop, starting out right. It's all about. Uh, Uniformity, it's, it's a critical component. So when you look at wheat fields across uh, North America, are we good at uniformity or are we, do we have a lot of room to improve? It depends where you are. Generally the guys that are in a continuous no-till system are better able to place seeds to a consistent depth. Generally, and again it depends on the previous crop and the location, but generally the more you till ground, or the more frequently you till ground, the more differences there are in the soil characteristics and the more challenges it leads with regards to seeding depth, but again it depends on the area. The, the growers that really do a good job, the guys that understand the components of yield, that do stand counts, they're better able to measure the seeding depth and to, and to make changes to improve it. So it, it's, it's a lot about awareness, it's making guys aware of how consistent fields are or not and showing them why perhaps the fields aren't uniform and then giving them some uh, indicators or some strategies to help them improve it. So what are some of the strategies to improve uniformity? Better equipment? Better equipment perhaps, condition of equipment, maybe forward speed. You know, if your ground's very hard and the residue's thick, uh, it's frequently a challenge getting consistent seeding depth. Sometimes if you add additional weight to a drill, maybe put sharper disc blades on it. If the disc blades are war, running slower perhaps in the heavier residue or harder soils, all of these would be things that you could do to improve uh, distribution of seeds or, or, or seeding depth. Residue management, I didn't really get into that, but residue management of the combine ahead of seeding is important too. If you don't spread residue evenly, you're probably not going to be happy with no-till. And not everybody no-tills, but even in a conventional system, it's still important to spread residue because most residue contains a lot of nutrients. So unless you spread the residue evenly, you're not spreading the uh, nutrients that's contained within the residue either. Well, if you're not spreading it properly either, even if you are conventionally tilling it, it's a nightmare to deal with in the springtime, especially exactly. if, the, if the conditions are a bit moister. Generally, when the when where the residue is heavier on the soil surface, the soils beneath it are cooler. When the soils are cooler, the relative nutrient availability, especially phosphorus, is impaired significantly as the soil gets, soil gets progressively cooler. So it has both direct effects on plant growth and mm. indirect effects through nutrition.